Now we're going to begin our look at reconstruction. Uh, our learning objective is to summarize the major developments of the reconstruction period. So now that the war was over, the South needed to be rebuilt from the destruction and the terms and conditions by which the southern states would be readmitted to the Union had to be determined. And this period is known as Reconstruction. President Lincoln's proclamation of amnesty and reconstruction called for a general amnesty uh, or pardon to all of the Southerners, all of, of the Southerners who took an oath of loyalty to the United States and accepted the Union's proclamations concerning slavery. After 10% of the state's voters in the 1860 presidential election had taken the oath, the state could organize a new state government. But there was another group that took a different approach known as the Radical Republicans. Uh, Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania and Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts led the Radical Republicans in Congress and they did not want to reconcile with the South. The Radical Republicans had three main goals. One, prevent Confederate leaders from returning to power after the war. Two, they wanted a strong Republican Party in the South. And three, political equality for African Americans by protecting their right to vote. This brings us now to the Wade Davis Bill. Moderate Republicans thought Lincoln's plan was too lenient on the South and that the Radical Republicans' plan was too harsh. The Wade Davis bill was introduced and passed in Congress. It required the majority of adult males, uh, or of adult white men in a former Confederate state, to take an oath of allegiance to the Union. The state could then hold a constitutional convention to create a new state government. Each state would have to uphold the ban on slavery, and ban any former Confederate official from voting or holding public office. The bill was vetoed by President Lincoln. Congress established the Freedmen's Bureau. The purpose of the Bureau was to provide food and clothing for the newly freed slaves. Also, the Bureau worked to find jobs for the newly freed slaves. After Lincoln was assassinated, Andrew Johnson became president. Johnson was chosen as Lincoln's running mate because he was from the South. Johnson had his own plan for offering amnesty to Southerners, and he would offer amnesty to any Southerner who took an oath of loyalty to the Union and would return their property, excluding Confederate officials who could personally seek a pardon from the President. Johnson granted pardons to thousands of Southerners. Many members of Congress were angry that several former Confederate officers and political leaders were elected to Congress. Radical and moderate Republicans voted to reject these new members of Congress. The new southern state legislatures passed laws known as Black Codes that severely restricted the rights of African Americans. While the codes varied from state to state, the effect was to keep African Americans in conditions similar to slavery. And now we come to Congressional Reconstruction. In March of 1866, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1866. The act gave citizenship to all persons born in the United States except Native Americans, and it gave African Americans the right to own property and equal protection under the law. The 14th Amendment granted citizenship to all persons born or naturalized in the United States and it provided for equal protection under the law and due process. Congress passed the amendment in June of 1866, and it was sent to the states for ratification. Then we hit the period of military reconstruction. In March of 1867, Congress passed the Military Reconstruction Act, doing away with Johnson's reconstruction programs. Former Confederate states, except for Tennessee, which had ratified the 14th Amendment, were placed into five military districts under Union generals. Each former Confederate state had to write a constitution that had to give the right to vote to all adult male citizens and it had to ratify the 14th Amendment. Fearing that Johnson would not enforce the Military Reconstruction Act, Congress passed the Command of the Army Act. 
that required all orders from the President to go through the headquarters of the General of the Army. Congress also passed the Tenure of Office Act that required the Senate to approve the removal of any official appointed by the President that required Senate confirmation. And this brings us now to Johnson's impeachment. Johnson becomes the first president ever impeached, and only the second, uh, or I should say only two, have been impeached. Now, many people think that Nixon was impeached, and, and that isn't true. Nixon resigned, uh, but he, Nixon was facing impeachment and a likely conviction in the Senate. Uh, the only other president to be impeached was Bill Clinton, who was impeached by the House of Representatives, but uh, was acquitted in the Senate. And that this is ultimately what happens to Johnson as well. Um, so Johnson challenged the Tenure of Office Act by firing the Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton, who supported the Congressional Reconstruction Plan in February of 1868. The House of Representatives voted to impeach Johnson for refusing to uphold the Tenure of Office Act and with trying to undermine the Reconstruction program. After more than two months of debate, the Senate vote was one vote short of conviction. So even though we have impeached two presidents, both of them uh, survived a trial in the Senate. And now we look at, at Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, Johnson did not run for re-election in 1868. General Ulysses S. Grant was the Republican candidate. Union troops in the South protected African Americans' right to vote, and Grant won the election, and the Republicans kept control of both houses of Congress. Congress, Congress proposed the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, which said that the right to vote could not be denied on account of race, color, or previous servitude. The amendment became part of the Constitution in 1870. By 1870, all former Confederate states had rejoined the Union. During Reconstruction, many Northerners moved to the South. Many were elected or appointed to positions in state governments. Southerners referred to these Northerners as carpetbaggers because some of them brought suitcases made of carpet fabric. Many Southerners viewed the Northerners as intruders who wanted to gain from the South's post-war troubles. White Southerners who supported the changes in the South were called scalawags. Many African Americans became active in politics and many served in public office. African Americans in the South established churches which became the center of their communities. The Republican Party became powerful in the South and started many major reforms including repealing the Black Codes establishing hospitals and rebuilding roads and railways damaged during the Civil War. Many Southern whites resented the influence of African Americans and the Republicans in the government. Some Southerners organized secret societies such as the Ku Klux Klan to undermine the Republican rule. Klan members used acts of terror to frighten supporters of the Republican governments, including African Americans, white Republicans, carpetbaggers, scalawags, and anybody else who supported Republican governments and equality for African Americans. In 1870 and 1871, Congress passed three enforcement acts to end the violence in the South and made the activities of the KKK illegal. Liberals in the Republican Party began to disagree with the party and left to join the Democratic Party. Grant won the election of 1872, but his second term was rocked by scandals. The Panic of 1873 caused many smaller banks to close and the stock market to fall, leading to a depression that lasted until the end of the decade. In 1874, Democrats won control of the House of Representatives and gained seats in the Senate. The Republican candidate in the election of 1876 was Rutherford B. Hayes, who wanted to end radical reconstruction. The Democratic candidate was Samuel Tilden. Neither candidate won a majority of the electoral votes, 
Due to widespread election fraud, it was hard to tell who won. The Compromise of 1877 uh, allowed Hayes to become president, and the Republicans agreed to pull federal troops out of the South. Hayes pulled federal troops out of the South, ending Reconstruction, and looked to end the sectionalism that had divided the nation. Northern investors helped to rebuild the South, and new industry was started, and railroads rapidly expanded. <clears throat> After Reconstruction ended, African Americans returned to plantations owned by whites. Some worked as sharecroppers, receiving a portion of the owner's crops, while others worked for wages or became tenant farmers, renting the land that they farmed. <clears throat> 